I had never done any crochet before. The uh, first seven to eight minutes are my uh, process of trying to learn the very basic uh, moves of crochet. Um, so uh, right now I'm trying to do a, a chain. You, you'll see it's the video is timeless very severely uh, because I wanted the I have cut out less of the process than when I uh, edit for the woodcraft because for the woodcraft well we, the process of no matter how ill informed a cut is a cut is a cut here with crochet there's the tangling there's a I feel like it's more interesting to keep everything <coughs> everything very inaccessible even if it's um, more accelerated especially since it's a uh, repetitive movement for um, before I started filming this I'd uh, watched a series of tutorials on um, the uh, the basic form types of crochet so uh, I was and I would also already watch the uh, tutorial I'd follow for um, then making the circle. So I knew about, I, I had a good idea of the t techniques that I'd need to uh, be able to use in order to make the nest I wanted to make. Here you see me change my hook. Um, I thought that the um, links I was making were too loose. To uh, I knew that different types of wool needed different types of hooks, but since I had no experience about that, and that I found the explanations on how to choose that on uh, unclear, uh, I just switch hook. Uh, until I found one that I felt right. I uh, purchased a kit um, of six hooks uh, at the dollar store to uh, experiment. That way I was certain that, it was a hook that, that there would be a hook that's at least close to what I truly needed. So the first thing you saw me do was a simple chain of a simple crochet. Here, if I remember correctly, is where I start trying to uh, go back to do the uh, um, double crochet, it's called, I think. I am I do not know the terminology by heart, so... Uh, someone that knows crochet properly, properly will be probably be able to uh, tell from looking at what I'm doing the type exact type of crochet it is but uh, I do not know I was basically following mostly from memory a tutorial for the old time so uh, I could have um, made it better if I was trying to if I had the tutorial in front of me, but um, I wanted to understand how it feels. I didn't want to always have to be looking at the video at the same time I'm crocheting because uh, then it would not be as fun. So I tried to memorize and understand how it worked and then just improvise with how I remembered it going as much as possible. One of the things that I'm struggling the most with in uh, when crocheting is um, the amount of things that has to be uh, that I have to keep track of. Like there's a I have to keep track of the working yarn, the one that's in my finger that I need to tension in order to be able to grab it properly. There's the 
piece of yarn that's on the hook that it can easily slip and I need to keep it loose enough to be able to pass the hook through to uh, add the chain, but tight enough so that it doesn't slip, which is a, and that, and one of the recurring problems I had was that uh, my hook would, um, it's hold yarn. I purchased it uh, long ago. So uh, it, the hook tended to uh, split the, uh, w the uh, yarn's fibers and which would make it harder to do the correct shape um, consistently. And I had to keep track of, yeah, that's there's just way too much to keep track of, which is, I, by the end of the project, I already felt myself starting to get more used to the movements and more able to keep track of everything at once, but it's still a struggle. One of the other reasons why I'm not following tutorials fully is because I want to be able to uh, improvise and feel out uh, the projects as I go. I don't want to be um, forced to always follow pl someone else's plans. I want to be able to make my own plans, my own my own things without needing to worry that much about proper technique and uh, the like. So uh, for this section, there were too many tutorials that I followed, It's that I uh, listened to. It would be hard to credit uh, the one that helps the most, but um, for uh, the portion where I'm making the actual nest for the actual circle, uh, I'm going to link in the video uh, description the um, tutorial that uh, truly that I was mostly following. One of the things that you haven't seen is the. Um, this is my first attempt uh, for reasons that I didn't really understand it ended up uh, tangled and um, I couldn't really save it so I just cut it out at some point. Uh, I think it was that I was going at it too loosely so um, it made knots without allowing the um, what the uh, tutorial called the magic loop to be closable I think uh, or, or I just made a mistake at some point which is very possible. It's uh, I was kind of struggling with the technique, so I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. But in between this one and the successful try, uh, there were a lot, and even before this try that you see right now, uh, there were a lot of uh, missed starts. Um, I had a lot of difficulty with the with making the initial loop, not because of the problem with the tutorial. The tutorial was very clear on what to do. Uh, it was mostly me being uh, having a lot of. Um, it's a level of dexterity that I don't normally need. So here is the start of the actual attempt. One of the things that I'll say right now is that the, the tutorial that I was following for making the circle was one that was designed to um, help us make perfect circles and um, that laid flat, which was very well made for this purpose. But 
I didn't want a fully flat circle. I wanted a, um, a nest for a, a chicken. With, so I wanted to, to uh, come back up, to cup a little bit uh, at the edges to um, give it that nest feel. So even though the tutorial, for the first row, I made exactly the amount of um, links of stitches that were um, called for by the tutorial. But uh, when I did, but the further I was along the project, the less I followed the uh, tutorial in terms of uh, counting the stitches and um, the order in which they would needed put the pu to be put in. Uh, I purposely tried to make it so that there would be less, slightly less than what would be required in between every stitch. That way, uh, I would guarantee myself that it would be too tight compared to what the tutorial tried to explain me. And that way I would ensure that it cupped enough for my purpose. I would have liked to that it for it to have cupped more, but um, it was fine the way it ended. And I'm really happy with how it looks. The initial plan was for more cupping, but um, it would have been excessive more than that. The way the technique worked for uh, making the circle was um, I needed to make 10 stitches into the uh, what was called a magic loop to um, allow for it to be closed by uh, pulling on the both on the um, start thread and then make 20 for uh, the second loop by making um, two I think it was called double stitch double crochet uh, into two of those into each stitch of the first line and then from there repeat the process but always add the 10 to every circle. So for the two first circles, I made sure to make the correct number, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then I started going wonky. One of the parts of the process that was hardest for me personally uh, was the um, choosing the correct place to put the hook in order to do the uh, double crochet because um, I feel like oftentimes I'd put it in the wrong place and make it tighter than it needed to be in order for it to pass through um, but I couldn't figure out the true correct place and then there's the connection between the when I've done the whole way around and I'm back at the beginning of the circle. The process of linking the um, beginning, the beginning of the loop and the end of the loop in order to start the circle at the top it, that part was really difficult for me. Uh, in fact, I cut out a lot of um, video on that uh, simply because there was a lot of um every time i reached that point uh, i would it would take about um, at least five or six tries in order to complete the uh, in order to connect the uh, circle together which is really not a good success ratio but uh I'll have plenty of time to work on it. I, have I am planning on doing a lot of crochet, but you'll likely not see a lot of it often. Uh, because I'm picking up crochet in order to have something to um, relax and unwind without needing to think much, without uh, fearing to hurt myself. It's a safe artistic hobby and it doesn't require paint 
it's um it was it's an ideal relaxing uh hobby once i figure out how to um once i get truly used to the movement and stop needing to waffle around that much so so the project that i have in mind for cr using the crochet is a very very big plan so i would do it al so it's likely that i'll do uh, the whole the project all the way through and only publish a video once i'm done or maybe uh, progress videos for um, specific times in the projects so some um, when i've reached major crossroads of the projects like uh, different steps but i'm unsure exactly what i'll do uh, One thing I struggled with uh, with this project was also doing um, being consistent with my stitches. Um, portions of the project have a lot. Uh, I have stitches that are a lot tighter. Others are much looser. It's a. Uh, it's not regular at all. It's not a problem for the purpose I had for this specific project, but uh, it was. Um, but if I want to make something that is um, more visually appealing and not purely um, for the mood, uh, I'll probably need to work on uh, consistency and repeatability. The reason I decided to uh, make specifically a nest for my uh, first chicken is that uh, in the I have a display case for uh, my uh, carvings and um, when I looked at them it felt cold and um, harsh uh, because it's a um, it's a glass display case with um, with uh, white tablets and with only wooden parts with no uh, with no color it felt um, it felt cold it so I, it, f it needed some colors, but I'm not willing to use paint right now because I don't have a proper workshop for it. So um, doing it with a, a wool, with a wool uh, nest for the chicken felt like a good way to add a pop of color to it and make it more soft and uh, pleasant to look at. One of the things that I'll have to improve is um, the posture when uh, stitching, when cr doing the crochet, because um, the finger that's holding the uh, yarn from the ball uh, stuck in that position for the old time uh, tensioning. Uh, it gave me... Um, I, once I was done with the project, I noticed that it really hurt uh, the um i was not uh, so i have to rework the way i hold everything in place while working in order to prevent myself from uh, not wounds it's not um i have no fear that it's uh, damaged in any way it's just that uh, i don't know uh, it the muscles were strained from just being tensed for so long because um, what you're looking right now is, um, I think it's four times. I don't, I don't know the exact uh, scale because uh, of the way I did it. I um, added multiple values of acceleration at different points. So it's uh, hard to say exactly what it is. But um, in total, I think I had something like three hours of footage split in the first day where i did uh the uh for the first seven minutes of this video 
is uh, I think 30 minutes of footage that uh, were I cut some parts of it that were um, superfluous like I, I did more chains than the ones I showed but uh, mm, it would have been redundant to show all of them so I, I removed some of them then there was a second day that was uh, also something like I, I don't think it was one hour a bit under an hour where I did the um, first and second circles of uh, the loop and then the final day which is for 45 minutes of video I think uh, where I did the whole rest of the project so not three hours not three hours at all so it's more like um, one hour and a one hour and a half maybe two of footage that i um, cut down into 20 30 minutes it's hard to say i don't have a um, the way the uh, player and editor works when i'm the um, scale i'm looking at doesn't show the uh, final time stamp time stamp A lot of the pro a lot of time I uh, drifted, uh, I was not static uh, at all during uh, the process of making this. My hands were all over the place, oftentimes somewhat hidden, but um, that's what happens when you get fo fully focused into your work. Uh, you get uh, not distracted, but you get the uh, end zone. I was getting close to that uh, at this point. Uh, I think that's the final loop or maybe the one before. I said that it was a ball of yarn, but I th that's not exactly it. Um, this old yarn that I purchased a long time ago was a uh, incredibly tangled up so uh, I had um, before starting to try and uh, do any project of with the crochet um, I had to um, untangle it manually so uh, and the way I found to do that is that I um, wrapped the wool around a stick until I hit a knot or a tangle and then I untangled that part and continued wrapping around the stick. It's a fairly thick stick, so when I reach the end of um, where I um, of the, the the bit of yarn that I'd freed for uh, the crocheting, I needed to pull it uh, fairly hard and throw it back in order to be able to uh, keep on working without the uh, so-called barn ball of yarn to. Uh, impede me
So there I was testing with the uh, chicken to make sure that I had uh, wa that the uh, nest was wide enough. So now uh, in this is where I'm truly not at all following the tutorial. Uh, here um, I would have had to do um, one stitch, w one uh, chain, uh, not chain, uh, one double crochet per stitch, and every so often add a double add twice the amount of stitches for one stitch and then go back to a I don't have the uh, exact numbers in mind right now but instead of doing that I do it one double stitch per stitch the whole way through which would be as far as I was concerned follow uh, after listening to the instructions would guarantee that I would have uh, that the final line would be too tight and force the uh, borders to go up a bit which I'm glad to report did seem to work I think I might also have skipped some accidentally uh, because uh, since I, w I spoke in the beginning about the fact that um, I sometimes had trouble finding the correct place to insert my hook, well that kept on going here still so uh, it's very probable that I skipped some uh, stitches accidentally. I don't know if it's visible in the uh, video, but there's a spot where I know that I didn't do a proper double, uh, I don't know, double crochet stitch, I think it's called. And I did the simple one accidentally and didn't bother going back. I noticed when I was making it, but um, the stitch was done, so I said, uh, whatever, I'm going to keep going. So, uh, Whoever is truly confident in their crocheting, well, sorry about butchering it, <laughs> but um, my intent was mostly to have something to serve as somewhat of a nest, so uh, the exact technique didn't matter for me as much as the principle of trying to crochet. So uh, here we're reaching the end of uh, the process. And um, for the final link between, uh, for the final loops um, connection with the final, um, with the uh, with the beginning, uh, I didn't follow the instruction. I tried to. Uh, I had a tutorial open on the other s on the, on my desk to uh, for the final steps, but for some reason. Uh, my, uh, I think she called it a slip knot. Uh, it, it, it didn't attach the way it was supposed to, according to uh, the tutorial. It would um, do the unraveling that uh, it's not supposed to. So um, I, I tried a lot to do the correct thing, but eventually I just uh, did a knot in it, and then. Um, Pretend then like that's what was needed. I write back around and here I'm doing a, using a darning needle, I think it's called, to um, hide and uh, tie up the both ends of the line. My uh, the needle I had was a lot was too long for the type of progress I had, and uh, the tutorial didn't say that, but I did make a knot at the end of those lines too. Um, 
because when I was doing the crocheting, uh, I f always felt like it was going to unravel at any time. So I didn't trust a lot in the process. Uh, I'm going to do other experiments, but uh, here's the final product with a nest. And uh, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.